So now that we have an idea that the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus of the atom, very small, dense, positively charged, and the electrons are in the electron cloud around it, we can start focusing on some of the numerical aspects of an atom. The atomic number of an atom tells us the number of protons in the nucleus. The mass number, oftentimes referred to as the nuclear number, tells us the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus. Since the majority of the mass of the atom is in the nucleus, that's why the mass number describes the number of protons and neutrons. Symbolically, we can represent an atom in one of two ways. The first way uses the symbol of the atom from the periodic table. So here we have an atom of gold. Its symbol is AU. And you'll notice two numbers, a superscript and a subscript to the left of the symbol. The superscript at the top, the 197, that is our mass number. At the bottom, the subscript, that is the atomic number. And you can see that on the periodic table. When you look at the symbol AU, you see the number 79. So in this fashion, we have all the information we need to know about an atom. 79, the atomic number, tells us the number of protons. Since all atoms are electrically neutral, it also tells us the number of electrons. The mass number is protons plus neutrons. So if we subtract 197 minus the 79, it would tell us that we have 118 neutrons. Again, 197 minus the 79 tells us how many neutrons we have. The second symbol, you see there, gold 197, that's used more often in a text format, like in a paragraph situation. The first symbol we'll use much more often later in the year for nuclear equations. But when it's written out, gold 197, the 197 again is the mass number. This is oftentimes referred to as the isotope name, since the mass number changes for isotopes, as we'll see here in a moment. But gold 197, again, you could look for gold on the periodic table, and when you would find it, you would find its atomic number 79, so you could figure out all the information that we did from the previous symbol, the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons. If we look at a blown up aspect of the periodic table, here is tin, symbol SN, the big number there, the atomic number. That's what's listed in the upper right-hand corner of the periodic table in our room and the one that I provided for you. The red number here, 118.710, that is not the mass number. The mass number is for an individual atom, the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. This 118.710 is what we're going to learn about here briefly, the atomic mass. What that is, it's an average mass of all of the isotopes, sorry, isotopes that exist on the planet. An isotope is an atom of the same element, so they have the same protons, but they have a different number of neutrons. So they have the same atomic number, but a different mass number. This is a part of Dalton's atomic theory that we mentioned was not true anymore because not every single atom of the same element are completely identical. Visually here we see helium-3 and helium-4. Both of them are atoms of helium. Helium's atomic number is 2, so they both have two protons in the nucleus, two red circles. What is different about them is the mass. Helium-3 has just one neutron, three particles in the nucleus. Helium-4 has four particles in the nucleus, two protons, two neutrons. So chemically, they're pretty much the same, but they do have different physical characteristics, mainly the mass. And as we'll learn about later, isotopes are extremely important, especially 
because unstable isotopes are what we call radioactive and we get a lot of interesting and very helpful um, aspects of humanity courtesy of radioisotopes, especially in the medical field. Quick question. Helium, and you see the electron cloud around both of the nuclei. How many electrons would be in that electron cloud? Well, we have the fact that all atoms are electrically neutral. So if there are two positive protons, there must be two negative electrons in those electron clouds because all atoms are electrically neutral. So if there's two positive protons, there must be two negative electrons to cancel it out. Moving ahead to number five in the notes packet, this is the definition of the atomic mass. This is courtesy of the fact that we do have these isotopes. So the atomic mass of an element is the weighted average mass of the atoms in a naturally occurring sample of the element. This is calculated using a mass spectrometer. A sample of the element enters into the mass spectrometer. The particles are separated by mass and then the calculation can take place. Mass spectrometers are also used for many other um, aspects of science and you'll probably hear them a couple times uh, in forensic files if we check out those forensic files on Forensic Friday. But what the mass spectrometer does in order to calculate the atomic mass is we need three pieces of information. We need to know the number of isotopes that an element has, the mass of those isotopes in AMU, atomic mass units, and the percent abundance of each isotope. And what it's going to do is calculate a weighted average, just like your grade in this class is a weighted average. 85% of your grade comes from tests, labs, and quizzes, 15% from homework and other such stuff. So there's a heavier emphasis on the test, labs, and quizzes than on the homework. So what ends up happening, if you get straight A's on your tests, but don't do any of your homework, your grade will drop a little, probably to a B. However, if you do all your homework and have 100% in that category, but flunk every test, your grade's going to drop dramatically down to like a D because it's weighted more heavily on the test labs and quizzes. So that's what happens with these isotopes. So here you see the calculation of chlorine's atomic mass. There are two isotopes uh, of chlorine on the planet. Let me get my highlighter. Chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. 75% of all the chlorine on the planet is chlorine 35. 24% is chlorine 37. So when you take the mass of the isotopes multiplied by the percent abundance as a decimal, moving it two to the left, then you see each isotope's contribution to the atomic mass. And when you add them together, you get 35.453, which is pretty much what the periodic table says for chlorine. And you can tell that the average, the weighted average mass is closer to chlorine 35's mass than chlorine 37's mass, since there's more chlorine 35 on the planet. Pause the video for a second and see if you can calculate the atomic mass of zinc in your notes. Hopefully you gave this a try. Um, there will be an atomic mass calculation on your test. The nice thing is, the, I'll give you the answer, it's on the periodic table. Although I will fudge the data a little bit just to make sure it isn't exactly like the periodic table says so I can see to make sure you're not just writing the number down from there. But here is the calculation for the atomic mass of zinc. Now, don't forget, a lot of people forget since it's 4.11% for this isotope. People just go 0.411. You gotta move the decimal two spots over. Same thing here. 0.62% becomes 0 0.0062. Now as far as the rounding is concerned, we will learn exactly how to round calculations in chemistry, but for right now, a good rule of thumb, since 
all of the mass measurements went to the tens, hundreds, thousands place. That's what I did my calculations to, the thousands place. And so they match up. I won't be grading you strictly on that right now or harshly, but it will be something we'll pay more attention to later. And in lab, we calculated the atomic mass of senium, and hopefully you found that to be helpful as it's a very similar cal calculation to this. So that concludes this part of the notes, and we'll see you next time.